I'm Eric Linask with the TMC Newsroom. I'm here at CTIA in Las Vegas, and I'm talking now with Professor Simon Saunders, who's the chairman of the Femto Forum. Simon, welcome. Thank you, Eric. Uh, first of all, for our viewers who may not be uh, familiar, tell me what is the Femto Forum? So the Femto Forum is the industry association that works internationally to enable and promote femto cell technology. We started in 2007 with a couple of small companies involved. Uh, many of those small companies are now medium-sized companies, and we have 120 members today. 55 of those are carriers. Between them, they have 1.4 billion mobile subscribers, which is 27% of the world's total. So what we actually do is we work on both technical and market issues to bring femto cells to market and to help to sustain the industry as it moves forwards. Excellent. Uh so your booth here at the show is actually uh, right next to ours. You guys have been pretty busy there uh, this week. We've had an outstanding show. People have been beating a path to our door, which we're, we're delighted by. And, and there's been a lot of news around femto cells. So, uh, and there are some very good reasons for that. So you know, there's a huge outpouring of mobile broadband traffic. This creates real challenges for a mobile operator. They want to continue to deliver this great service and make it even better for users of smartphones and other phones that are doing web browsing and many very data hungry applications. But on the other hand, their networks are now becoming very congested, very filled up with that data. And they face a real, a real challenge now. Do they build lots more cell sites? Which is an expensive thing to do. It's slow and it's not always the best thing that, that users want to see happen. Or do they find another way of delivering that mobile service to actually a better quality but cheaper? Uh, and, and that's starting to hurt. You know, that is a challenge. Femto cells really help with that. So femto cells are low power, low cost, wireless access point, supporting mostly 3G technology today, but also 4G technology coming. And it works with your existing mobile device, your, your iPhone, your iPad, any 3G enabled phone basically. You plug it into the broadband, standard domestic cable or DSL, whatever it may be. And in a few minutes, it comes on with a green light and you're instantly receiving great service that's consistent coverage wherever you live, five bars on your phone all the time, and this very reliable, very solid, fast data experience. So the customer gets you know, that great benefit of a very reliable service, uh, and typically a very interesting service plan that may include a lot of bundled minutes, for example. What the carrier gets is they can deliver that service and allow users to go on using their smartphones and other devices very heavily without it creating a bigger load on their networks, so fundamentally reducing the cost per bit by of order a factor of five compared to the macrocell environment. You talked about uh, the organization's growth and, and the, the increased attention that uh, femtocells are getting. You know, there was, it wasn't all that long ago when there was, uh, we'll say, some controversy around whether femtocells were good, whether they were not, whether they're not good. Um, why has that changed? Well. On the one hand, it's the need is accelerated, you know, as we've seen mobile networks, you know, becoming capacity constrained. On the other hand, it's because it's challenging technology. I mean, to put effectively a whole 3G base station in a small box that's cost effective for an end user to install is a massive technological challenge. But we've worked through that. And over the last couple of years, we've worked on issues of managing the radio network. We've worked on the business case. We've worked on the standards. One by one, all of the factors that, that could have threatened to slow down femto cells have been dealt with. And the operators that are moving forwards now have really recognized that, and we've started to see launches across the world. That's actually moved forwards in the course of this week. So we first published a market update looking at the status of the market in November of last year. At that point, there were eight operator commitments around the world. By the time of Mobile World Congress in Barcelona in February, just what, four weeks ago, five weeks ago, something like that, that had increased by 50%. When I came to this show, it had increased by 63%. As of yesterday, it had increased by 75%. So we, right now today, we have 14 operators committed. We have nine service launches. AT&T announced on our booth yesterday that they're rolling out nationwide. Sprint let people know that they'll be moving to a 3G Femto cell by the end of this year. Vodafone in the UK have stepped up the marketing so I can barely move in London for seeing these signs everywhere highlighting that only Vodafone in the UK can guarantee home coverage. There's about 60 operators worldwide trialing this technology, many of whom are in customer trials and getting ready to actually the deliver the technology commercially. 
So when you talk about uh, folks Thank starting to roll out 3G femtocells, what does that CIA say about uh, uh, the 4G market? Um, you know, we've got people building out and, and talking about it and even having 4G uh, networks rolled out uh, and, and operational. Uh, why aren't why aren't folks like Sprint rolling out, introducing 3 and 4G uh, well, femtocells? We're moving in that direction. So right now, today, the market in femtocells is very much emphasized on the 3G environment because those are the phones that are out there today. That's what customers are wanting, and that's where the, the operator challenge is today. But we're already preparing the ground. While supporting the 3G market heavily, we're preparing the ground for LTE and WiMAX femtocells in the quite near future. And uh, what we've done actually this week is we've verified that you can use LTE femtocells to deliver much closer to those exciting headline data rates that come from LTE. So right across your femtocell coverage in your home or your office or outdoors, you get those really fast data rates. You get this assured quality of service. And the operator gets to do it in their existing mobile spectrum. So LTE and WiMAX need wide bandwidths to work effectively. And you need to put the macrocells and the femtocells on the same spectrum because it's very limited and expensive. What we've also seen is there's a huge business case for doing that with typically a 10x return on investment for operators and a payback period like 18 months on their total femtocell investment. So that's coming and we're supporting that work heavily. Good. We've been talking here at uh, CTIA in Las Vegas with uh, Professor Simon Saunders. Simon, thank you again very much for joining me and uh, congratulations on your success today. Thank you so much, Eric.